In this video, we'll talk about how we can integrate a MongoDB database with a Flask REST API written in Python. So in this video, we will actually integrate or add a local MongoDB database, uh, which will be running uh, on a local host server to all the pre-written Flask REST API. So let's see how we do that. So first uh, and foremost, to start uh, integrating MongoDB with our Flask REST API, the first thing which you need is MongoDB, of course. So you can download MongoDB from mongodb.com. And if you have a Mac, then you can actually just do a brew install MongoDB community and you can get it on your machine. Now, uh, the next thing which you want to do is have a client uh, for your MongoDB database. So uh, it's perfectly uh, fine to not use a client. It's not compulsory, but uh, it's very easy to visualize your database when you have a client uh, or a UI client for your database. So. Uh, for that, uh, I use something called as MongoDB Compass. So Compass is by MongoDB, so it is a UI client for MongoDB database. So uh, I use Compass uh, when I have to actually visualize or see my database in action in real time. So we'll see how that happens. And yeah, so once you have MongoDB and MongoDB Compass, you can get started uh, to integrate your MongoDB database to a Flask REST API written in Python. So uh, let's first run our MongoDB server before we start anything. So uh, in Windows or Linux, there might be a different way to start your server. So you can just Google that. Uh, but for Mac, since I'm using a Mac and uh, I have Homebrew, I'll be starting my MongoDB server using Homebrew. So let's do that now. So all I have to do is do a brew services start MongoDB community. So it's really easy to start your uh, server using Mac. And now that it's started, I can shift back to my uh, repository and open the code for my REST API. So I'll give you a very, very brief uh, explanation of what the REST API does and what is happening in the API so that you know we can actually start. Yeah, I think loaded let's wait for the color to show up syntax highlighting and yeah so uh, here we have a very simple uh, flask api written in python so uh, the api is uh, of a to-do list so you can use this api to add tasks to your to-do list uh, so create the tasks update the tasks and delete the tasks so it is a crud api where you can get all the to do list tasks that you have, you can post them, you can put or update them, and you can even delete them. But if you see in this uh, piece of code, uh, our only database is basically a Python dictionary here. So we are not using a concrete database uh, here, we are just having a Python dictionary where we store our values, and the, data ga the database gets completely you know, uh, scraped or vanished uh, after you close the server and when you run it back again, you just have one in it. So we need something concrete and Let's see how we can use a MongoDB database to actually uh, integrate with our to-do list API and develop a fully fledged REST API or a CRUD API. So MongoDB is a NoSQL database where uh, your uh, database or your values are stored in the form of a document. So we'll see how what all that means. And yeah, so let's start integrating MongoDB to our database. So to do that, the first thing which you need is something called as uh, Flask Mongo Engine. So we need a way to actually have our Flask application talk to the MongoDB server. So for that, we have something called as Flask Mongo Engine. So let's install that. So we'll do a quick install Flask Mongo Engine. And since I already have it, uh, already done. And now that you have it, the next thing which we need to do is basically uh, import a bunch of stuff. So let's start doing that. So before we import something in MongoDB, uh, let's actually import a few things here. So we'll be importing fields and Marshall web. So I'll talk about what these things are. And uh, now let's uh, first import our configurations for MongoDB. So just have a few configurations which we need to actually have our uh, database initialized uh, to MongoDB. So we have our config, 
where we tell that the database is going to access to do model. So we haven't created this to do model yet. We'll be doing it using Mongo Compass to show you how easy it is to actually create a database. Next, we have our host. So we are hosting it locally on our, uh, on me, it's a laptop. So yeah, and the port is 27017. Then we create a MongoDB, Mongo engine object. We initialize it to our applica Flask application. And now before we jump on to writing any more code, uh, let's actually create our database and Mongo DB. So I'll be using Compass for that. So let's just give it a minute to load. So yeah, uh, while this loads, we can actually start writing our code. So we won't save or run the code, but we can start writing it um, by the time this initializes. So, so the next thing which we need to do is have a way uh, for us to map our database or map our Python objects to the database, something called as ORM, object relational mapping. So we need to create a class uh, called as to do model. Uh, which will be inheriting from db dot document, and now uh, every object. Okay, so one second, yeah. So every object that is made of this to do model class uh, will be stored as a document inside MongoDB. So let's see what we have as our uh, keys uh, in the key value pair that we want to store. So first we have is an underscore id. So underscore ID is uh, given by default to every single document that you create on MongoDB, but this is usually stored as an object ID, which is uh, not the best to read or to understand. So we'll be actually uh, overriding this ID and creating our own integer ID, which is very easy to read and very easy to work with. So let's do that first. So we'll have an end field. Next is our task. So the task is going to be db dot string field require equal to true and uh, did I spell that right? Yeah. And similarly, we would have something called as a task summary, which will tell you more about the to this task. Okay. So this is how we actually link our uh, or map our objects to actual MongoDB documents. So. But now that we have our compass ready, let's actually start making the to-do model uh, local DB. So once you open MongoDB compass, you have this as your welcome screen. So since we are running the server locally, we just press connect and we connect to the again. This is Okay, so we have a to-do model and we're going to name the collection as to-do model as well. Press or hit create database. And take some time, but it's worth it. So yeah, let's go inside our to-do models. And as you can see, the collection has no data. So let's actually uh, you know, finish writing our uh, code to integrate it and let's actually add some data into this. So now that we have written our class, uh, now let's talk about how we can uh, interact with uh, or interact with the API using uh, uh, MongoDB. So first, let's work with POST. So POST is how you create a database or sorry, create a document. So for that, we'll be doing a, a few changes. So I'm just showing this right here. So first is uh, a simple post arg, so a request parser where you uh, take in the body of the API into arguments. So uh, if you are not familiar with uh, how Flask uh, REST API or request parsers work, you can watch the Flask REST full tutorial, uh, which is available in the uh, channel. Uh, the next thing which we want to talk about is uh, creating a to-do object. So we have a to-do model where we pass in the ID as a to-do ID, task as the arguments task, which will be in the body of the post request and summary and all we have to do is do a dot save to actually save it in our database and yeah it's that that easy and yeah we do an id equal to do id so instead of doing this now let's actually return the object that we have created so let's just do to do 
and to actually just hold back. Yeah, this is how we write a post request uh, to actually get some task from the user and save it, saving it in our database. Just the model dot save, uh, object dot save. That easy. Next is uh, get. So get is basically how we get our task back from the server to the client. So for that, we just have task equal to to do model dot objects dot get. So we get it by the ID because ID is unique. And if not task, there's no task, then it's abort and say that could not find task with that ID. Uh, yeah, that is it. So it's as simple as uh, doing uh, an ob a get call on the objects inside to do model and getting the to do ID. And we just have the task here. The next thing which we talk about is going to be put or basically how we update our database or update our documents inside our database. So let's go through every single one of these now. Just update it here. And yeah, so again, we uh, parse our arguments, get the arguments back. And then if uh, the user wants to change the task, then we do a get on the to do ID. And we just do a dot update method call. And uh, that's it. So we just do a method, uh, update call and we pass in uh, the arguments that the user or the client wants to change. So for example, if I want to change only the task of the uh, to-do list document, I just pass in the task uh, arg. And if I want to change a summary of the task, then I just pass a summary argument and change the summary directly with just one update command. So yeah, pretty simple, pretty straightforward, nothing complicated here. The next thing which we have is delete. So delete is how you delete uh, the document inside MongoDB. So again, we do a to model dot objects dot get uh, underscore ID created by the ID and call the delete uh, function and that's it. We delete our to do list task. We just do something called as task delete and send a 204 which is for delete. Great. So this is how you write uh, basically or integrate MongoDB with Flask. It's pretty straightforward, uh, nothing nothing magical here. So we just have very, very simple uh, APIs. So since we are using Flask Mongo engine, uh, it makes it really easy for us to uh, make CRUD, CRUD applications. So we just do a get on to do ID, get the Task, return it, then do it again. Uh, uh, make an object, do a dot save to save it to the database, do an update, and do a delete. So, pretty simple function calls which we have here to integrate our Flask API with MongoDB database. And now we just have to make a few changes here. So, let me show you what those changes are. So, we had uh, imported fields and Marshall with here, right? So. Now, what are fields? So, uh, when we return something back to the client, as you can see, we are returning a task, right? And a task here is a to-do model object. So, uh, when we return a response uh, back to this uh, client, it has to be serializable or in a serializable format. And the most commonly used serializable format is JSON, uh, which is JavaScript object notation. So, we have to make sure that uh, everything that we return is in serializable format. So that is where uh, fields come into the picture. So we create a uh, something called a resource fields where we have an ID task and summary. So whenever we return a to-do model object, we want it to look like this and Flask helps us do that with something called as Marshall with. So Marshall with basically adds this set of rules, uh, resource fields to our uh, methods. And whenever we have that as an annotation, uh, whenever we return an object, it is converted into this form, id task and summary. So this is how we actually uh, use fields and marshal with a pretty cool feature of Flask RESTful to actually return back our uh, objects in uh, a serializable format. So now that we have our Flask application ready, let's run this and see how this works. So to see whether it's working properly or not, we have Postman is going to help us uh, send the request back to the server and see whether it's working or not. So let's run our server first. So we do a Python API.py. We have a server running. 
let's see if we have created a to-do model yes we have and let's do a post to to-do slash one give it a body this is task one and summary is also task one and send the request okay so it doesn't show what you have sent but when you see the database here uh, hit refresh you can see that we have actually added our to-do list task into the database and it's pretty easy pretty straightforward to see how this works so let's do it again let's add another one so let's add task 2 do task 2 and somebody else task 2 hit send and now let's see our database again hit refresh and as you can see we have our task 2 in the mongodb database as well so yeah this is how you integrate a mongodb database with a flask rest api and you use mongodb and mongodb compass as the ui client to actually visualize or see your database in action so yeah uh, that was a tutorial on mongodb integration with flask uh, thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one